Hello, welcome to Sky Sweaty Record Review, the only new music review show hosted by a French professor immediately after leaving the YMCA. You will notice I am back in my beautiful home, Buona Pasqua. Uh, I am back from Switzerland, as you can tell by all the Swiss chocolate that I put back there. I am no longer on top of mountains, I am no longer in a hotel. I am back home, and I'm here to review an album for you. Now, it's actually an EP. Uh, this is a 10-minute EP. Uh, Christian Leave that I reviewed last week was also like 20 minutes. Um, I find that there are so many options on title, And for some reason, this week, there's no clear standout. There's like a couple trap, auto-tune, nightmare rappers that I might get to and see if I can appreciate, find something good in. But I didn't feel like that today. But instead, I was drawn, as I often am, by a cover. I was drawn by this cover, which my printer, for some reason, made full size. Whoa, check out that thing. Okay, now this album is called Noah's Audition Tape. And it's by Spielberg, S-P-E-E-L, no, S-P-E-E-L-B-U-R-G, and No A, N-O space A-H. A lot of stylized names these days. Is that symbolic for a lack of originality? We'll get to that. So the album is called Noah's Audition Tape. So I thought just for fun, let's pretend like I'm the judge at this audition. I don't know Noah. I don't know if this is Noah or if this is Spielberg. I don't know if Noah's the one who's making the music or Spielberg's the one who's making the music, which one's singing. I don't know. But I'm just going to talk to Noah. This is my reaction to your tape, Noah. First of all, my first question is, what is this? I mean, this looks like some kind of... I don't know, Adult Swim fake album cover. Are you a comedian up here? Is this album going to be comic? It is. Is this album like an audition tape like for a singing thing? Is this going to be music? It is. So first of all, I'm a little bit confused in your audition tape as to what tone you're trying to set. And as a matter of fact, Noah, I think throughout the entire thing, I had trouble figuring out what the tone. The real question that you have to ask when listening to your music is, is this too clever? Cleverness is great, but sometimes it comes at the expense of real human emotion. And if you're going to be totally clever, then just be totally clever, be totally funny. But if you're trying to get at real human truths, which I think you are, Noah, then you have to be very careful right on this line of, is it too clever? I'm not going to quote Spinal Tap, there's a fine line between stupid and clever. I think it's more, there's a fine line between clever and too clever. So let's take you through your 10-minute five-track album, Noah. First track, I'm Always Late. Okay, well, that's, that's funny, okay? It starts off, and it's like, I have to be there by two, and I'm leaving at two. And, you know, it's sort of like, okay, so this is kind of a comedy thing. Like he's t It's like almost like observational comedy about what it's like to feel late. And so I'm like, no, okay. And then sort of in the middle, you throw in there, Noah, you throw in just one little thing about, like, well, before cell phones, people were often late and we didn't care. And then you make the indication that you know, being on time is a good sign in a future mate, so let's both be together and be late. So I'm like, okay, well, that's kind of interesting. So you're kind of positing this as kind of like a, a modern day album where you're trying to show that the way that you perceive of existence maybe is not in line with what our technology has brought us to. All right, Noah, this could be okay. You saved yourself from being just a funny, like, novelty track by this little bit at the end. The next, the next song, Nightmares, or Nightmare, I forget which. My, my notes are always funny because I'm working out, so it's hard to read. It's either called Nightmare or Nightmares, and this is more funny but true. Now, when I first heard it, I'm like, okay, is this just like a song about having nightmares? Like, you know, like Seinfeld? What's the deal with nightmares? You go to sleep, and you think about bad stuff. What is that? I mean, I'm like, all right. But there's something about the production that I think really saves this, Noah, and makes this actually a really nice track. It's pretty typical of the entire 10-minute album, and if this is your audition tape, I say to continue on with this production style. Uh, it's very breezy. It's not very harsh. You can't really dance to it, but you also move. You know what I mean? It's, it's upbeat, but not frenetic. It's mostly synthesizers, a little bit of guitar, mostly drum machine, a little bit of organic sounds like snapping, things like that. So 
I like the production, and this is maybe my favorite production on the album. I mean, the vocals start off, and Noah, if that's you singing, you sound kind of like, almost like smogish, you know, like, I'm like, you know, no, 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 you're kind of talking. But then uh, some harmonized vocals come in, and it actually gets almost Bowie-ish. And at times, this album goes towards the Bowie and the Lou Reedy. So, that's very interesting. And then, Noah, I hate to tell you. Track three, you went off the rails. Track three is for me, if that was all I heard, you would get the, what do they do on American Idol? Is it like, like just thumbs up or thumbs down? Whatever it is they say on American Idol, I wouldn't, you wouldn't be going to Las Vegas. Ooh, it's called Stan Sm, and it's, okay. First of all, Sky Sweaty Record Review, I'm generally a positive person. But one thing I hate is Beck. I just don't like Beck. And I don't like Beck in the last 20 years, his weird adult contemporary middle of the road rock garbage. And I like that even more than I liked his early stuff. Actually, that's not true. His early stuff, when, when Beck came out, it was fascinating. It's like, who is this guy? Why is he making bottles and clam, clams, clap your hands, and all this kind of weird idiosyncratic, like, it's hip hop, but it's not. It's rap, but it's not. I, I totally acknowledge that Beck is very revolutionary and that what he did changed pop music and, and underground music. But I personally don't like it. And his early era stuff of just like rapping and having a super ironic distance and just like really cute and clever, just clever after clever. You know, I mean, this on this track, Noah, you have like, you know, a camel is just a cigarette and my favorite pet. Like, oh, noe. Yikes. No, thank you, man. Like this... You know, this could be good, but not if you're going into this, this Beck stuff where everything's just so clever and ironic and detached. You know, I'm standing tall in my Stan Smiths. Oh, Noah, how are you gonna save this? How are you gonna save this on this 10 minute audition tape? And I almost turned it off, but I'm glad I didn't, Noah. Because, this is fun actually, addressing one person. I'm glad you didn't, Noah, because the last two tracks are wonderful. You pulled it out. So you kind of started here, and then and then you went a little bit better with nightmares, and then you did your you did your your your, your fake Beck stuff. Ah oh, man, oh I do like Midnight Vultures. That's the one Beck album I like. So hey, for all you Beck fans, there's one thing he did I like. Okay, and then you go down here in, in Beckville, and then you go up with a song called Daytime TV, and this is where I think Noah has some real future as an artist making this kind of music. So the song's called Daytime TV, and all of the songs are, all of the lyrics are about the themes of daytime TV, like during daytime talk shows, you know, like, my dad has another family, or I just learned I was adopted, or the kid's not yours, all the kinds of drama of daytime TV. But he's able to sing about it in a certain way that he's able to sort of pull out these threads that make you realize, okay, he's being cute and funny and just talking about daytime TV, but also he's highlighting the fact that daytime television is an amazing way of seeing like the disintegration of the family, the deterioration of American joy and values, and then packaging that as a product and selling it back to you. He's able to communicate it through this song, which is just kind of funny, and then he goes into his like fake Beck stuff by having some, you know, go, Sally, Jesse, Raphael, like they say, that's like at the end of the chorus. And that's just where I'm like, no, stop listening to early Beck, please, Noah. Although it is catchy. So, this is nice. Th this song, Daytime TV, I suggest people listen to it. And it would be the best track on the album if it weren't for the last track. So many options. And Noah, on this show, what we do is, if I like something, I give it the Sky Stamp. So this gets the Sky Stamp. That, that puts you in the running for Stamp of the Year, which I'll be doing this week. I don't know if I'm going to do that. This song is called So Many Options. And in this case, it's a really wonderful song that is right on that line of clever and too clever. It uses cleverness, you know, cleverness is the power of, of intellect, which is often the opposite of the kind of passion you need to make great art, right? That's why film critics don't make good movies and why music critics don't make good music. It's right on the edge of that. But I think you succeed. It's a song about the options that are given to us through today's technology. And I think there need to be more songs about this, okay? Maybe it's a little bit obvious. Maybe it's an obvious thing to sing about, but we should be singing about it all the time. Our entire cultural 
landscape and the way that we understand culture and existence has completely changed in the last 10 years. And there's like three songs about it. <laughs> I don't know. But this one is a really good one. It starts off with the anxiety of choice. That we have so many choices that he's left in a state of anxiety. The next verse is saying that he wishes that Netflix would come out with a service where you could start in the middle of a TV show, like it used to be 10 years ago. And I don't know, I think that's a beautiful idea. And then he says something, I don't know if he's saying it ironically. No, if you're watching this, you can respond. Oh, which, which by the way, like three or four artists have now watched my videos and responded. And I just want you to know that is the greatest thing that could ever happen for me. I'm very happy that artists watch me thinking about them because art is wonderful. Okay, so he says here that things were better 10 years ago. And I don't know if he's being ironic, if he's saying that because that's what people have always said, or if he actually means it. But the idea that all these choices are making us miserable is again, a very modern theme and an important one. And I think it's personal and it goes beyond the cleverness. But the song remains clever. Like he talks about getting an unpaid internship at Lehman Bros, which is pretty funny. Um, and then talks about how we're all getting laid off and talks about the economic turmoil. And then he ends it with the, the, the supply and demand of modern dating, you know, you're the one for me until something better comes along. So, Noah, you passed the audition. But I wanna see from you more tracks like daytime TV and, uh, and uh, so many options. Stay with the cleverness, I think that's your strength. I don't think that, at least I don't know, if you just went fully earnest, f totally non-ironic, 100%, this is who I am, that it would be particularly good. But you have enough to say, enough interesting comments. Uh, what is this, a bug there? What is that? Yikes. Oh, well, I'll figure out what that thing is, eating my flesh later. You have enough things to say that I think you need to keep going. So you've passed the audition. Good news. You don't need to look so nervous, Noah, or Spielberg, whichever one you are. And uh, happy, happy, I don't say happy holidays. That's too bad. There's something weird going on with the camera. I dropped it in Switzerland where there's this weird, do you see that sort of like effect? Like the camera's kind of cracked. So that's kind of cool. Huh. Okay. Uh, the answer to the trivia question today, well, of course, is, is milk chocolate, which was invented in Switzerland. Okay, until soon with our, our year-end uh, countdown, there's the camera.